Hey everyone, Boone here, and today I'm going to show you how I created this cool little animation using the new Tapered Strokes feature in the latest release of Adobe After Effects. So for my first step, I'm going to set up my comp here. I just created a new 1920 by 1080 comp, and I want to put some guides in here. So I'm going to click this little button. I'm going to turn on guides, and I'm also going to turn on rulers, and then I'm going to drag a guide in. And now to put this right in the middle, I'm going to right click on it and edit the position. So the middle would be 1920 divided by 2, 960. I'm going to drag another guide out here and you basically want to take half of 1080 which is going to be 540 and now we have these perfectly centered. So I'm going to click on view and I want my assets to snap to those guides and I also want to lock those guides. So now can't move them, they're all in place, everything's ready to go. So the first element I'm gonna create is the flames uh, coming out of each engine. Now I know that's normally a bad thing on an airplane, but in this scenario, let's just say it's supposed to be there. So I'm gonna grab the pen tool, and all I need to do is draw two vertices. So I'm gonna draw one randomly, and then go over kind of to the side, to the left, and draw another one. And now I need to adjust the settings of the shape layer. It's created the, a new shape layer in the timeline. Now I'm gonna go up here with that shape layer selected, and I just need to turn the fill off by clicking none, and click OK. And I'm gonna set the stroke to, yeah, we'll set that to 100 pixels. We could change that later. And now I'm gonna grab the points of this path here and holding control, I'm gonna move this one to the center and then I'm gonna grab this other one. Actually, I need to grab the selection tool and then I'm gonna snap that one on this guide as well. And we'll draw it out to, you know, maybe a fourth of the comp. That's looking good. Okay, so now we have the start of our comp. So let's drag this and we'll open up our shape layer and I'm actually going to call this right engine or whatever that's fine now I'm going to open this up open up contents and open up the stroke and now in this latest version of Adobe After Effects you'll see two new attributes taper and wave so let's open up the taper so the first thing I want to do is let's say this is our flame our airplane is going to be here and it's going to be shooting out this direction so this will be the tip of our flame so we want this to come to a point so we have all of these new attributes here. I'm gonna tweak the end length, and now you can see this is coming to a point. I can take that to 100%, and now you can see I have this tapered off. I can adjust the end ease here, so I can you know, kind of round that out a bit if I want. So I'm gonna set that to maybe something like 10%. Okay, now I wanna give this some more curves, make it look like an actual flame. So I'm gonna open up the wave attribute, and I'm gonna bump up the amount here. I have amount, the wavelength, and the phase. So let's turn up the amount and see how this looks. Okay, so now I'm starting to see some waves. I'm gonna zoom in here, actually. So I'm gonna set this to something like 25%, make it a little, no, not too much. And I can adjust the number, or the wavelengths here. And I think, uh, actually, 100 might be pretty good. Let's do 115. All right, now to bring this to life, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add a trim paths animator. So let me close taper and let me close with the wave attribute. And I'm gonna go up here and I'm gonna click the add button and trim paths. So now I've got this trim paths animator and if I adjust the end, you're gonna see that this is starting to uh, shrink. So I'm gonna bring this down to maybe, let's do like 65, no 75 actually. And then let's tell these kids outside to shut up. Just kidding, I love kids. Okay, to actually bring this to life, I'm gonna add an expression to the end attribute. So I'm gonna hold Alt, click on end, and then I'm just gonna add the most basic of expressions, which is the wiggle expression, because I want this end, I want the tip of this flame to wiggle. And we can set the amplitude and the frequency. Let's try something like um, 25 and 25 and see what's happening here. Now let's look. Okay, now I can adjust this even more just by, I can have the flame um, grow or shrink just by adjusting this as well. It's gonna wiggle within that 25 kind of uh, pixel, 25 percentile. And now what I can also do is uh, turn on that motion blur. And I'm gonna turn on motion blur for the layer. Now let's see how that looks. Okay, now we're getting what looks like a little cartoon flame kicking up. All right, one other thing I can do is, this is looking a little wide, so I can turn the width of this down. Let's bring the width down to like 75 and uh, see how this looks. 
Now to make this just a little more dynamic, I can duplicate it and then grab uh, the end of this one here. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna change uh, the vertices here, make it curved, and then I can grab it and just kind of position it and then duplicate it again, grab this one and just pivot it out so that the flame has like multiple tips kind of kicking up here. Let's see how this looks. That's looking pretty cool. Okay, so there's one jet engine. Let's call this uh, right engine on the actual comp here so I can see it when I bring it in. And the last thing I'm gonna do with this comp is actually change it to make it 10 seconds. And grab all of these. And now this engine's ready to go. So I'm gonna open up my airplane, my main comp here. So here's my airplane. Now let's bring one of, let's bring my right engine in and then position it over my right engine. I'm gonna scale it down. There we go. Yeah, that would not be good in real life. Really, really not be good. One other thing I can do here is with my main comp is I can unlock this and now I can actually have this shrink or grow. I can change the width of it if that's how you wanna do it. All right, so now that the animation's in place, I'm gonna to go to the effects panel and I'm just gonna add a few effects to my engine here. So first, I'm just gonna grab the fill effect so we can add some color to it. Maybe change it to a yellow. And then I'm gonna add some blur to this as well. Just underneath there, pump that up a little bit. Maybe to 10 or eight, something like that. And now I'll just quickly put standard glow on there and then bump up the radius. And now let's take a look what we got going on here. Okay, now to make another engine, I'm gonna simply grab this one, duplicate it, and call this one left engine. And now I'll move this one straight over here. And I'm gonna grab the layer and just shift it a bit so that they're not um, entirely wiggling in the same exact way. Okay, now I'm gonna add some contrails coming out of these engines. So I'm gonna go back to the project panel. And actually, I don't need to name this right and left engine since I'm simply duplicating it. So I'll rename that engine. And now I'm actually gonna duplicate this and call this one contrail. And I'll open up this comp and then just delete all of these. But now I have, um, if I turn the guides back on, you can see I have the guides and everything's ready to go. So now I'm gonna grab the pen tool and I'm gonna draw two vertices the same kind of way. But this uh, one out here to the left is gonna be off um, out of frame here. And I'm gonna center up this one again and bring this one down on my guideline. And now I'm basically gonna do the opposite with my taper. So let me just quickly rename this contrail. So I want it to start off thin and then kind of as it dissipates, it gets wider. So I'm gonna open up the stroke attribute and go down to taper. And now I'm gonna taper the start length. So let's just bring this up. Um, 100 is fine. I'm gonna adjust the ease because I don't want it to start off in a perfect point like that. Let's bring this to 50%, that's looking good. And now I can open up the wave and I can bring up the amount and bring up the wavelength. And I actually want this to be much wider, so I'm gonna grab the stroke here and I'm just gonna bring it um, really, really high. So let's see here. Let's bring it to maybe 250. And then I'm gonna bump up this wavelength some more, something like that. And now to have this kind of animating, I'm gonna animate it via the phase. So I'm gonna go here at the head of the clip, add a keyframe, and then I'm gonna go to the five second mark because that's where my uh, master comp ends. And then I'm just gonna change this to uh, three revolutions. So hopefully this will loop. Now let's take a look at this. Now the only problem is it's going in the wrong direction. So to do that, let's see if I could just change uh, the path. I don't wanna do that because that's gonna change the whole taper. So all I need to do is go to the second keyframe and change this to a negative three instead of a three. And now it should go in the right direction. Okay, cool. Now all I need to do 
is close this or bring up my main comp and I'm going to bring my contrail in and then I'm going to line it up right here and now I need to kind of composite it in here so what we can do this is first I'm going to take the opacity bring it way down to uh, let's say 25 25 is looking good and I'm going to add a blur here add that same blur this one here I'm going to bring this way up, to maybe 35. Okay, that's looking good. Now I want it to fade out as well, so I'm going to add a quick mat. I'm going to grab a rectangle shape, and I'm going to change the fill to uh, a linear gradient. I'm going to turn off the stroke, and then I'm going to draw it right over here, like this. And now I'm going to open up the rectangle and we'll make adjustments to the gradient here. Let's see, kind of smooth this out a little bit, move the point of the gradient. And we'll call this Contrail Fade Mat. Now I just need to bring this straight over my Contrail. I'm going to toggle the switches and modes and I'm going to change the Contrail layer to Luma Inverted Mat. And now I can see I've got my Contrail uh, fading off. All right, now I should just be able to duplicate this, and I'm going to parent this mat to my contrail, and I'm going to parent this one to this one. So now when I move this to my left engine, everything will be good. And now to make this a little bit more dynamic, I'm going to grab the second contrail and offset it so that the waves aren't totally matched up. And another way I can make it more dynamic is grab the columns. Oh, it's already open stretch. And I'm going to actually stretch this one out a little bit to change the timing as well. And again, another thing I can do is grab both of these and adjust the scale. I'm going to unlock them. And now if I want to make them a little bit thinner, I can do it that way if I want to expand them out. That's going to warp it a little bit, but it'll save me from going into that pre-comp and changing it however you want to do it. Now for the last step, all I need to do is add my map underneath here. Now I'm going to turn the opacity of my map down to maybe 30. And we could add a slight blur to this as well. Let's maybe do 25% blur on that to make my plane pop out a bit. Bring the opacity down even more. And then a simple animation on this. Grab the position. Keyframe it and then move my map over. So now my jet is cruising. Might want to smooth out this gradient a bit more. Okay, so now I have a plane that may or may not be in trouble, may need to find a runway to land. Okay, so that's the new tapered stroke feature inside of Adobe After Effects 2020. If you liked the video, give me a thumbs up. And if you want to see more content like this, subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell.